qualifying one was good. However, we only had a single purple sector, sector 3. Sector 1 and sector 2 went to Gasly and Verstappen respectively. I had after the run, run P1, 0.314 seconds ahead of Verstappen in second place. I kept P1 after the others, other, other runs, but ended with Ocon in second place, 0.168 seconds behind me. Qualifying 2 was slightly better with two purple sectors this time, in sector 1 and sector 3. Verstappen, however, kept his sector 2 purple sector. Uh, I, this time, had a 0.355 second gap to Leclerc in P2 after the one lap from me. This became a 0.107 second gap to Verstappen in second place. After uh, I was in second place after the session, though. Qualifying 3 was the best with two purple sectors again in sector 1 and sector 2. This time, no, I said second, uh, sector 2 purple. I ended my lap with 0.8. 8 0 second gap to Perez after only one lap for everyone due to the rain that arrived at the end of the session, so the grid remained the same after the checkered flag. Also, Crofty's back. I don't know whether you'd prefer him or not, but you know, I'm just gonna let him do his job. I'm not gonna steal it from him. I'm not that mood. I'm not that rude. Welcome along then to France, one of the great racing meccas, host of the world famous Tour de France and widely thought of as giving birth to the art of motor racing in the late 1800s. How far we've come since then as this year's race gets underway. It's time of course for the French Grand Prix. Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners. Six go to the left and nine go to the right for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral straight are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the chicane. And watch out for drivers running onto the distinctive colored stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. The engineer lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Russell, Lando Norris, and Verstappen, Ocon, Hamilton, Vettel, and Robert Schwartzman, Mick Schumacher, Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo, and Magnussen. Bottas, Albon, Yuki Tsunoda, and Carlos Sainz. Joe and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. I don't know why the audio is back this time, but here we are for five red lights at France. Lights are out and away we go. Perez gets a great start and uh, so does George Russell in P4, uh, P2 and 4. Perez gets ahead into P1 as George Russell time, time tries now to challenge around the outside for Leclerc. 4 P3. Will he be able to get it through turn 2? No, not quite. Leclerc takes back P3 as Perez gains position and takes the lead of the race and there's already quite a gap between the front two runners. Up and down the grid, Hamilton uh, staying in P8 with Verstappen in P6 as well. I can't remember the grid, so I've probably made a mistake there as we head towards turn eight on the mini style straight. Down towards the chicane we go. Doesn't look like Winter's gonna get close enough to Perez to try and make a move. Is anyone down the grid gonna try and make a move? Heading into the Mistral straight, looking at the moment, the gaps aren't close enough for anyone to do so. So there's going to be no overtakes into the chicane. Heading then towards the Williams' favourite sector of this entire circuit for some reason. Uh, they don't normally like downforce, but here they like it and prefer it to straight line speed. Heading through turn 11, 
looking around the outside, not quite close enough there. Is he going to try and make the move for turn 12? He was looking through turn 11, getting close enough, getting close, literally on his rear. Not quite close enough to make a move around the outside. He'll have to wait another lap and head in towards the end of lap one. Perez is going to lead the French Grand Prix uh, ahead of Winter. Leclerc follows in P3 with Russell and Lando, P4 and 5. Staffing a knock on old rivals, P6 and 7. As Winter goes towards the outside, is he going to be able to make a move on Perez? No, not quite. Lit kind of backs out and makes himself weak through turn two. This is going to allow Charles Claire to make a move now. Heading towards turn three, where's Charles going to go? He's going to go down towards the inside, but not enough space for Charles to properly make the move on in Winter, and Winter, giving him enough room, closes the door and keeps P2. Is he now going to have, he's going to have to turn a, def a defense into attack? Is he going to get close enough to Perez down this Michel Street? No, it does not look like he is going to. The gap is slightly decreasing now, but that's because he's towards the end of the straight. Three tenths is not close enough for a dive bomb in Winter's eyes, and he back in. He uh, lets Perez keep P1 for now, heading towards sector three. Again, this is his strongest sector. Two tenths the gap now. Three tenths is slightly increasing out the exit of turn nine. Through turn ten, gap decreases towards the turn eleven. Two tenths. Is he going to try and make a move around the outside? He's close enough to do so. He's going around the outside. Is Perez going to give him room on the exit? Yes, he does. Towards turn 12, he is fully ahead. But Perez tries to fight back and goes a little bit deep, heading into the break zone. Through turn 12, it's the exit, and they go now. Turn, turn 13, Perez trying to go a little bit wider. Then um, the Williams can't see if he can make a move like that, uh, like uh, the, winter uh, the Williams did on the outside of turn 11 but no it does not look like he's going to be able to make a move and Winter takes P1 back from Sergio Perez and now you can just take a little bit of a breather lap 22 that lap 11 lap 12 lap 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 12 uh, 21 22 20, 22 yeah it's looking an alright race Perez uh, Leclerc, Verstappen, Vettel, already have pit, hence the 27 second gap. Um, nothing really to report at the moment. Williams driver just making a um, clean race. No track limit violations so far. Um, and really, he hasn't had any challenge since lap two when he got past Perez. He has been updated, uh, being updated by his engineer. And um, he, he was a little bit surprised to learn of Perez's pace and um, almost joked that uh, maybe he shouldn't have rushed so much to try and get past him on lap two if he knew that was going to be his pace. But, of course, with the, uh, with the tyres that Perez had, maybe it was a little bit... I, I think he had mediums. I can't... no. Okay, never mind. Uh, he had mediums, I believe. Yes, that's it. Mediums. Uh, for Perez so surprising to be uh, such a different pace variation and instead of the softs winter goes on the hards he is definitely doing a one-stop now uh, Leclerc Perez and Verstappen all went on to the softs um, I'm only saying this because I remember this after looking at the race direction after the race and there goes Leclerc uh, filtering behind winter in second place but look at the gap it's decreasing massively through turn one through turn two turn uh, the gap is decreasing even on the acceleration zone is it going to decrease through turn three and four slightly is it going to decrease now through the long right hand a left hander and right hander that uh, right hander and turn, left hander at turn six seven yes it goes down down and down but it's increasing as Perret at uh, Charles now comes in for his second pit stop um, now everyone is um, on the, all the top runners are on the soft uh, medium soft soft uh, medium soft medium strat uh, where's winter the only one out um, on the medium hard strat surprisingly no one else came up with the one stop strategy uh, Williams leaving the quickest and um, seemingly is at the moment as, Perez, as Charles Claire only decreased the gap 6 seconds in the 6 laps that he's had 
Um, it is good progress, one second a lap, but will he be able to keep that pace up on the medium tyres? I don't think so. Um, meanwhile, turn four, a uh, little corner cut from the Williams car, and turn 14, second track limit violation. Uh, unlike real life, we are not going uh, four limits, we are going three limits, and on the third one, you get the penalty. Is this going to be a penalty in lap 43 then? Uh, seems to be. If we have the first lap car of Lance Strong uh, just ahead, um, you don't, the winter doesn't really seem to be closing in on the um, Aston Martin here. Uh, through turn 9, he does call in the cut slightly. Uh, maybe that can give him a little bit extra advantage he needs on uh, Stroll to lap him. Um, but seemingly not required. Yeah, no, uh, not able to do so. Lap 53 then, final lap. The gap has increased back up to 23 seconds. Leclerc never really looked close. Um, surprising that uh, Williams really only only Winter's side of the garage as well. Uh, surprising that they're the only ones to come up with this strategy. In the, in the meanwhile, everyone else in the race, Bottas has the uh, dropped out the race. Uh, Schumacher, Stroll, Sainz, and Grand New Joe, uh, Zoe Grand New are. Uh, lapped as Perez now makes a move for third in the con uh, third in the drivers. We will check up on that after this race finishes, and finishes it will with Winter coming around the final corner. He's going to come up to the line. He's going to win the third race of the season and get a slight bit closer in the championship. He believes he's out of it. But if he keeps doing performances like this and Max keeps doing performances like this, he's going to get close. Extremely close. So let's go check up back on uh, Verstappen and Perez uh, for their final lap. So Perez, fourth place at the moment um, behind Max, who is rivals with... Um, uh, winter at the moment so any move now could be crucial for winter as towards the main straw straight they go turn eight max fatten defends the inside Perez is going to go around the outside is he going to make a clean move yes he does up into p3 he goes and what a move that is as he takes p3 away from his teammate and hands it, uh, hands winter the equalizer <coughs> Now, Tokyo Drift going a little bit wrong. I kind of realised this should have been after all race, but uh, uh, I, uh, I suppose. But who cares? So coming to the end of the formation lap now. Uh, just going around the final corner, and I blame. I will have to warn you. The start is not at all the same as the start that you have just witnessed. All will become clear in about 30, 30 seconds. Yeah. So, pulling up to the grid now. Less than 10 miles an hour. Purple stop. Superb Boom. parking there, mate. Great Let's make sure grid block. The the and go now out. we just wait for the lights. Keep an eye on the lights. The I just realised I am talking over the mark the all the time. Be ready with the clutch. And I'm glad the engine sounds like. As we get ready for the five red lights, RPM, optimal range, a little bit above where we want it, dropping it down, losing the revs a little bit, and allows Perez to gain. Overtake, there we go. Charles Claire, don't you dare down, go down my inside. Tries it, I have to take the middle line just in case of Perez and Claire, but I keep the lead, and Perez now drops behind. A little bit poor on the start, a little bit too high of RPM and then trying to decrease it, I had a little bit too less, allowing Leclerc and Perez to try and get back past me. Uh, to try and get past me. A little bit wide into turn six, may allow Perez a good run through turn seven, that was actually turn five, I need to say. Uh, depending in the middle, like always, Perez goes around me towards the outside. Perez 
Leclerc also going around the outside and we've been hit and Perez cuts me off and in the 180 confusion I've been hit, I've been given damage and I'm spun again and as it's the beginning of the race I restart good thank you Perez if you want you can go back rewatch that blame me if you want but I am completely blaming Perez because at a point of contact he's at the apex I am alongside because if you look at it his rear wheel is never in shock so here's the actual race restart that race beginning uh, Perez did get a better restart because that get a, get, did get a better start only due to the fact that uh, when it uh, when you restart when I restarted the session it immediately um, started the five red lights so I wasn't really prepared prepared unlike the normal start where I have the whole of the rest of the grid to line up to prepare so lap two uh, heading through turn 11 clean round the outside just coasting through the corner it looks like and up into P1 already before turn 12 Perez just try and fight back though uh, a little bit futile as um, he goes in a little bit deep and does not have to grip to fight me and so I will continue I will retake the lead and continue there and lead I do for the rest of the entire race uh, Leclerc, uh, Leclerc did get a little bit close after my pit stop but that was only kind of hard compared to the softs eventually the softs died out and I extended the gap by six tenths uh, before their pit stop if I continue well there are several hypotheticals number one if I continued with the damage would I have got this high uh, would I have got this victory I do not think so uh, and that's the only reason I did restart because of the damage otherwise I would have been fine so yeah like I was saying if I didn't if I didn't get damage I think I would have continued with that restart because with the 23 second gap that I had I could easily have used that in the spin but the problem would have been getting past everyone would I have had to change my strategy to theirs I don't think so I think I would have been fine I would have pushed a lot more to try and get ahead of all of them but I think it would have been a touch and go so yeah I know I did it in Britain but yeah, I think if I didn't get damage I probably wouldn't have restarted um, so yeah that's the only reason I restarted because I had damage formation lap was okay and the tire temperatures would after a little incorrect low speed Tokyo drift round turn 12 the start was alright and then to turn 1 I kept P1 to Perez but heading on to the straight uh, Perez got a great run and my defence in the middle could not do anything to keep him behind. Heading into turn 8 I had the inside to Perez with Leclerc hanging off the back. Now if you're wondering why this is not what you saw, Perez turned in on me towards the apex and I spun. I'd done 90 degrees before planting the throttle and tr to try and spin me 360. But I only did 180 and it left me backwards and Norris, really unable to avoid me, hit me and gave me damage. As it is lap 1 and the entire race could still be complete before 9 o'clock, I restarted the race and the start this time was quite poor and I lost the lead before turn 1 to Perez. Straight line speed was not there, hence the purple sector distribution in qualifying and I could not get him into turn 8 and I had to hang behind him through my strongest sector. This did mean I tried two moves around the outside of turn 11 and turn 12 and the closest I got was my front wing just behind his diffuser. I did however try and move into turn 1 but with Perez taking the inside of turn 1 I knew that I would not be getting the track through turn 2 and I backed out letting the Red Bull keep the lead. This left me a little, uh, left me almost a little weak to Leclerc into turn 3 but I stayed ahead. Therefore uh, I finally got Perez around the outside of turn 11 
and I got him out of the corner and into turn 12. I let him take the outside with the poor A and with the poor AI lines. Around the outside of turn 12, he went wide and I took the lead. Next up was lap 22, my pit lap. I chose the one stop from mediums to hards, while everyone had to do stop strat of two mediums and a soft. The release was a little worse than in Austria, but I kept P1 and the uh, 3.0 seconds gap to Leclerc decreased very quickly after the hards needed to heat up. Lap 23 ended and the gap was 1.2 seconds, and by the time Leclerc had his second pit stop, the gap became 1.8 seconds. After, pit, after his pit stop, it started at 25 seconds on lap 30, and by the next moment, lap 36, the gap dropped to 19.8 seconds. This lap, I had a corner cut, turn 4, only a little cut, and turn 14. Again, only a little cut. Lap 43 gave me the penalty with a cut at turn 9, only, only a slight cut. By this lap, the gap had dropped to the lowest 18.2 seconds on lap 43. The smallest this gap became was 18.2 seconds on lap 43. After this, it increased from there because his mediums fell off the cliff and at the beginning of the final lap, the gap increased to 23 seconds for an easy victory that I very much needed for my confidence. Lastly, for the rivalry, I needed several points on Max, and after the loss of no penalties point for me, I needed him to lose his podium. Thank you, Checo, for his great move around the outside to turn nine to take his podium. Although I still do not forgive you for the first lap before the restart, but keep this up and I will forgive you. Several things to go back on. Uh, me trying to spin the car around, I don't think that sh was the best idea. I think I should have just let myself spin. Rejoin the circuit. <coughs> on the outside. And then go from there. Um, this way I would not have lost as much time as Britain. Hopefully. I, I, I would like to think that if I spun and didn't plant the throttle, I would have only done 90 degree spin. And so I would have been able to join in the mid pack. And so hopefully I wouldn't have lost too much time. Um, then what was I going to say? So yeah, I think I shouldn't have planted the throttle. That kind of ruined my race. Uh, because that's what gave me damage from Lando. If I continued with the damage, I definitely was not going to win. Because the damage would definitely cost a couple tenths a lap. And a couple tenths a lap would be at least 10 seconds. And then with all the taken and all that, I definitely think I wouldn't have won that race if I continued with that race. I think it would have been close. Don't don't get me wrong. I think it would have been close between me and Leclerc, but I, it feels a bit artificial that I had to do a second race. But you know, everyone does it. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of doing it. And I hope you guys aren't. I don't really care about what you guys think. I don't know why I'm trying to justify it. I I definitely think it would have been close between me and Leclerc if I continued with damage or without damage. Um, so I am glad I did it without the spin because, yeah, that spin definitely would have ruined my race. Anyway, I think that's over. I think that's it.